The Seamoth is one of gaming's most iconic vehicles, but how fast does this little one-man submersible actually move? The answer might just surprise you. The Seamoth is powered by small multi-directional thrusters which allow it to move in any direction up to 360 degrees. Think of this as being similar to a military jump jet that can take off without a runway, except this bad boy can sustain hits from massive sea dinosaurs while those pathetic jets can be blown up by tiny missiles. Another little known fact is that these multi-directional thrusters also enable the Seamoth to function equally well in space environments. Long-range Altera research ships typically carry at least two Seamoths for exploration of small astronomical bodies such as asteroids and planets. However, Seamoths can also be fabricated at standard mobile vehicle bays on board the mothership if further exploration is needed. I suppose this would make this version of the vehicle a Space Moth rather than a Seamoth, although the purpose of the vehicle would remain the same. Knowing this information, it's hard to say why we couldn't escape low orbit or fly above the water in Subnautica in a Seamoth with these low-powered thrusters. Maybe these need to be recalibrated to take into account a planet's gravity or be refitted specifically for submerged or space flight. The Seamoth has a standard crush depth of 200 meters below the surface, but this can be enhanced by reinforcing the hull. The Seamoth can also be modified with upgrade modules to make it more versatile, by adding cargo space, increased efficiency and solar charging, pressure and collision compensation devices, and enhanced sonar and defensive capabilities. There are also likely to be additional space-specific upgrades which we don't see in Subnautica, such as lasers for mining asteroids, or additional thrusters to move faster in space. The Seamoth has a height of 3 meters, with a length of 1.5 meters and a width of 1 meter, and is made of titanium, lead, and glass. This is in addition to its lubricants, power cells, and its meat puppet driver, which all have an impact on its speed. Titanium is a good choice for the Seamoth's design. It's lightweight, resistant to corrosion, and has the ability to withstand extreme temperatures. It is also as strong as steel, but 45% lighter, which makes it ideal for exploring in harsh environments and keeping its pilots safe, while also being able to remain nimble and fast to escape danger quickly. So how fast actually is it? Drum roll, please. The Seamoth has a top speed of 13 meters a second, which equates to around 29 miles an hour, or 46.8 kilometers per hour, which makes it just a tiny bit slower than your average rabbit running as fast as it can, or about the same speed as Usain Bolt's fastest ever 100 meter sprint. But this is the top speed that the thrusters are capable of without drag or gravity, so it's only achieved in space. On 4546B, the Seamoth has a top speed of 11.25 meters a second in any singular direction, or 25 miles per hour, or 40 kilometers per hour, which is about the same speed as a charging African bush elephant. The speed in any particular direction is independent of all other directions of movement, and as such can be added together using vector addition to give an increased overall speed. If moving in multiple directions at once, such as when you're running for your life from a Reaper Leviathan that sees you as a tasty snack, activating all the ship's thrusters slightly increases the vehicle's top speed. If going forward and up at the same time, the maximum speed is 15.91 meters a second, and if going forward, upward, and sideways, the maximum speed is 19.49 meters a second. Or ever so slightly faster than an ostrich. So take that, birds. You damn feathered fiends will deny us no longer. So next time you're trying to get to the surface without being eaten alive, make sure to move in as many directions at once as possible. Otherwise, you just might end up as another victim in a watery grave on 4546B. And if you're interested in finding out more about how Subnautica plays on your primal instincts to create fear, then you should click right here to find out more. And I'll see you over there to tell you all about it.